A few weeks ago, I uploaded a tutorial on how to set up your own cloud gaming server using Parsec and AWS. You can watch that video in the card that should be coming up somewhere up here. Now, quite a few of you asked whether I could make a similar video, but use Moonlight instead of Parsec, since it's generally accepted that it offers better streaming quality and higher resolutions like 4K. Well, your wish is my command, although to be perfectly fair, I had already planned on doing a video using Moonlight. So I guess it's not my command, or your wish is my wish, or... Now, the difficulty with using Moonlight is that it uses NVIDIA GameStream, a technology to stream games from your NVIDIA-powered graphics rig to, you know, a remote system like a tablet or a low-powered laptop or something like that. Now, the problem is that that uses GeForce Experience, which is not supposed to be compatible with the kind of GPUs they use in the cloud, such as grid drivers used on AWS. Luckily, some smart people have posted a script to GitHub uh, which downloads a specific version of GeForce Experience and patches it so it still works on these cloud servers and allows you to use GameStream and, by extension, also Moonlight. So, let's roll the intro and get started. In the meantime, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps a lot. So, I'm in the AWS console and I'm going to go to EC2. We'll be using this to create an instance, so I'm going to go to Launch Instance and Launch. Now from here we're going to need to select Windows Server 2019 Base, so I'll select it. And then we need to choose our instance type. Now any G-type instance should be fine. Uh, I'm going to go with G4DN.xlarge, uh, but in reality any of these instances here, the G ones, uh, will work. Uh, from the next page you can basically skip everything, we don't need to do anything from here. And from here we'll choose the size of our disk, I'm going to set it to 512. Now if you want fast drive performance you might want to choose the GP3 volume type uh, or if you want really super fast performance you can even choose provisioned IOPS. However do know that these will increase cost considerably. I'm just going to go with GP2 which is fine for me. So I'm going to add a tag here, remember that the name tag must have a capital N and I'm going to call it Moonlight Rig. I'll click next. Now this part is where we need to create a security group, which is basically a firewall telling us which ports we want to allow into our machine. Uh, so I'm giving it a name and a description and then we'll need to enable a number of ports to allow Moonlight to connect to our machine. So I'm going to create a custom UDP rule for port 3389 uh, that will allow further access to RDP. Honestly, you don't need that, but I tend to do it anyway. Then we'll create another UDP rule, uh, this time for port 48010, and again, allow it from everywhere. Now a custom TCP rule uh, for port 47989. And again, for everyone, we'll add yet another TCP rule, 48010, and again, allow from everyone. One more rule, again, TCP 47984, and another rule here, this one custom UDP rule, and we'll say 47998 till 48000. So that's a range of ports there. So in total, these seven rules allow Moonlight to access our machine. So we'll launch it, and you can either use an existing key pair or create a new one as I'm doing here. So I'll call it Moonlight Rig, and download the key, and I'll click Launch Instance. Okay, so now our gaming rig is starting up. As you can see there, the instance state is pending. So we'll just wait for it to be running and then click Connect. We'll go to the RDP Client tab and click Download Remote Desktop File. We now need to get the password, so we'll click Get Password. But again, we need to wait four minutes before being able to get the password. So we'll just wait four minutes and then clicking Get Password again will let us browse to select the key we downloaded earlier and if we now click the crypt password there you go the password is there I'm gonna go ahead and copy this guy 
and paste it into a text document for later. Again, don't leave passwords in plain text files on your systems, guys. I'm just doing it for the purposes of the video. Okay, so let's now connect the instance using RDP. Continue. And we'll enter the password here. And here we are in our brand new Windows instance. So the first thing you'll want to do is go to the server manager. And we're going to go to local server. And there's the setting there, IE enhanced security configuration, which we need to, to switch off. Basically, this will let us use the Internet Explorer browser, or as I like to call it, Internet Exploder, to actually download stuff. So let's go ahead and open the browser now. And yeah, I'll use recommended settings, whatever. And we're gonna go to anydesk.com. Spelled properly, ideally. So this is a remote software, much like Microsoft RDP, uh, but it doesn't create a virtual display adapter. Now this is important because uh, with a virtual display adapter, the script won't work. So after downloading any desk, it will run immediately. We'll click install any desk. We don't need the printer. And I'll click accept and install. Okay, so any desk has installed now. So from settings, we'll click set password for unattended access. And we'll enable unattended access and choose a password. Make sure you make this one secure, guys. Okay, we'll click apply. And now what we'll need to do is give our system an alias because right now it's EC2AMAZ11PH. Yeah. So what we can do is go to settings from here. And, from, and click that button there, choose alias, and give it a name. I'm gonna call mine Tech Guru Rig, or actually Tech Guru Moonlight, yeah. And we'll click register. Okay, so now we can connect to this rig using Tech Guru Moonlight. Okay, we'll close that. And now we'll close this RDP session by signing out. So back on my desktop, I'm going to go ahead and close RDP client and open any desk. So you need to download this on your computer. Okay, we'll open it. And now we'll type in the ID techguru underscore moonlight and then add at ad at the end of your alias. Uh, choose a console session and enter the password we set just a few seconds ago. So this takes us to the login screen. Uh, we can go to the keyboard icon here and press Ctrl or Delete to bring it up. And then we'll log in using the password we got from the AWS console. To make it bigger, you can click on this display icon here and choose Stretch to make it a bit easier to see. Okay, so now we'll go back into Exploder and we'll go to the GitHub page containing the script that will do all the configuration for us. And here we are. And you'll see a command under the installation heading. Copy that command. Now we'll go to Windows PowerShell, paste the command and press Enter. And this will start installing everything for us. So do we want to install an audio interface? Yes. Do we want to install the NVIDIA driver? Yes. Okay, so GeForce Experience is being installed here along with other requirements. And also VCable, which is a virtual audio driver, which we'll need for game stream. Okay, so now the GPU driver is being installed. Now, in my experience, this typically fails on AWS, but the script does offer to actually use the Parsec GPU updater tool to get the driver installed. Um, so we'll click yes, and that will launch the Parsec GPU updater, which will in fact successfully install the GPU. 
Now for some reason, at least in my case, this script sometimes gets stuck, but I find that just pressing enter works and the script continues. So we'll need our AWS access key. So to get that, go to your AWS console and click my security credentials, go to access keys and create an access key. You can see there the ID and password, which I've already disabled. <laughs> so go back here, paste your access key and your secret key and choose whether or not you want to save it on the machine. I'm choosing not to. Okay, so we'll type yes and the driver will be downloaded and installed. Again, of course, guys, I'm speeding things up here. So we'll choose yes to update it. And this will take a while. In my case, again, I'm speeding it up. Okay, so no reboot is required. Great, so we'll choose no. And now you'll notice that on the desktop, there's this icon continue GFE, that's GeForce Experience patching. So this will resume the original script. Now, at a few times whilst the script is running, any disk will seem to hang up. That's because of changes being made. So for example, when you see this bar here, you can pretty much close any desk because you're not going to be able to continue. Uh, but that's no problem. You can simply close the AnyDesk window and reconnect to your server to pick up where you left off. So I'll close it, go back to AnyDesk, double click on the machine, click connect. And yep, as you can see, we've resumed right where we were. Okay, so applying resolution fix. Again, this might make AnyDesk stop working. So again, close it and reopen it, which is what I'm doing here. So yeah, it's a bit annoying, guys, but you know, the result is worth it. We'll connect again. And yeah, the script is now done. It unceremoniously closes. So now we'll need to restart the machine. And obviously after restarting, wait a few seconds or minutes until the system restarts. And now we'll connect to it again. Again, I'm speeding things up here. Okay, so let's go ahead and log in. And we are back in. So now I'll open GeForce Experience. And once in GeForce Experience, you'll need to sign in with your NVIDIA account or Facebook or however you normally sign in. Okay, so now we'll go to settings and go to shield and enable game stream. All right, so we're doing well here. So what I'd like to do is be to be able to log in to the desktop of the system directly through Moonlight. So to do that, we'll click add, then we'll go to C colon, Windows, System32, and then we need to find the program mstc.exe. So what this does is it tells GameStream that we want to be able to view the entire desktop with Moonlight and not just games. Okay, so that's done. So we'll now open Moonlight on our machine. I have some other computers there, guys. Pay no attention. We'll click the plus icon and we'll enter the public IP address of our system, which as you can see is conveniently displayed on the desktop. We'll click OK and then we'll double click on it and it tells us to enter a code on the machine. As you can see, a pop up comes up. So I'll enter my code and click OK. And now I should be able to connect to the machine via Moonlight. So I'm going to close my AnyDesk session and connect to the machine via Moonlight directly. All right, and here we are. We are now using Moonlight, okay? So strictly speaking, what you do at this point depends on what games you want to play. In my case, I'm gonna go ahead and download Steam and obviously then get some games installed so I can actually test this guy out. So here I am in Steam and uh, 
Let's see, what game am I going to play? Mm, uh, yeah, of course it's gonna be Doom Eternal. This is Tech Guru after all. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and install this. And uh, again, obviously I'm speeding it up. It is a 60 gig download after all. And we'll click finish and wait for this download to complete. And thanks to Movie Magic, the download is ready. Now you might want to add this game to game stream um, so you can launch it directly from Moonlight. The problem is that since this is an older version of GeForce Experience, it doesn't support many games, including Doom Eternal. So you'll need to add it manually. So you can go to the settings page and click add and manually go to the location, which should be in C colon, program files, Steam, Steam apps, common, the name of your game, and then you'll find some EXE there. Now, please note, you do not need to do this because in fact, GameStream allows you to connect to Steam Big Picture. Our Moonlight gaming server is now set up. Now, of course, the video wouldn't be complete without some gaming footage. Uh, I'm gonna start slow and start out with some 1080p 60 FPS gaming. And if all goes well, I'll then bump it up to 4K 60 FPS. Let's give it a shot. So I'm gonna go uh, back to Moonlight on my system. And I'm gonna check the settings. I'm at 1080p 60 FPS for now. Okay, so I'll double click. And as you can see, I can either launch the desktop Doom Eternal or Steam Big Picture. So you don't need to add every game manually, guys. You can just launch them through Steam. Anyway, I'm gonna launch Doom. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, and we are in. I'm gonna skip some of the introduction stuff for the sake of the gameplay. Um, but it is running very, very smoothly indeed. Uh, already better than Parsec in my experience. All right, so let's uh, start a game here. Uh, I'm gonna go to my go-to, which is Exaltia. And as you can see, the machine is working pretty well. Loading quite quickly as well. Okay, so this is not a let's play or a gameplay video. Um, uh, again, if you see any stuttering in the recording, know that I wasn't experiencing this at all. Okay, so it's simply that my screen recorder couldn't keep up uh, with the 1080p recording, and you can only imagine what it's gonna do with 4K. So anyway, there's the wolf, and we'll kill the welcoming committee here. And look at the smoothness of those uh, glory kills, quite nice. Um, okay, so let's see how the platforming works, and that's fine. Now, I did have some lag right there. Yeah, okay, so where you saw the, the rocks frozen midair, that was lag. I was on Wi-Fi. Um, so I'm just going to go through this battle scene, so you can actually see what it looks like on Moonlight. Uh, and then also we'll be able to compare the exact same scene on 4K. So I'll just happily kill these guys here, and uh, yeah, we'll go for the secret armor. And there we go. Uh, now I normally try and shoot a grenade in this guy's mouth, but the mouse I was using didn't really have a middle clip. It's a, it's a long story. Okay, so yes, killing more demons. And here we are, super shotgun, chainsaw kill, nice. And yeah, okay, so now this final guy here, again, I'll just kill him and we'll stop here to try some 4K gaming then. Okay, so there we go, we glory kill him, nice. All right, so that's what it looks like to game at 1080p, 60 FPS on Moonlight. So now for the main event, we'll bump the settings up to 4K. So I'm gonna close the Moonlight connection. That's Control shift alt q And now we'll close Doom Eternal. I'm gonna go to the settings and I'm gonna bump the resolution up to 4K. And as you can see, the frame rate is still 60 FPS. 
everything else will remain the same and we'll launch Doom again. Okay, so I skipped the intro videos, but they were smooth. Um, I've also enabled an overlay here so you can see my frame rate and also latency. Again, since the screen capture is a bit choppy, you'll want to look at that rather than what you're seeing on screen because that's caused by my screen recorder. So we'll switch to 4K resolution in Doom and oh my god, that already looks much better. And uh, we'll just scroll down to, so, to show, yeah, there you go. All the settings are at Ultra Nightmare. Okay. All right, so we'll go back to the same level. Uh, okay, so mission select, Exaltia. And loading screen, of course. And let's see whether we see differences with the 4K gaming. Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, so this looks objectively better. Uh, obviously, you need to be viewing the video at 4K to see the most difference. Um, but yeah, this game is very, very pretty at 4K. Uh, so even when I played this game on my home gaming rig, it couldn't game at 4K. So the most I ever played at was 1080p. This is really quite a treat, especially if you have a larger monitor. Uh, so how, how do you get up there and, and then clip? Okay, well, that's not, that's not Moonlight's fault. Okay, so a glorious 4K glory kill. And yeah, okay, the platforming bit. Again, guys, look at the overlay top left. Uh, you'll see I'm running an average of about uh, 48 and 50 FPS. Again, remember, I'm using the lowest powered instance type and I'm not exactly on stellar Wi-Fi here. Uh, but still, this is very, very playable. And yeah, okay. So let's just go through this fight scene again so you can compare it with the 1080p version. So we'll switch to the super shotgun here and... Oops, <laughs> what? Oops, sorry, my bad. Again, I was not using a gaming mouse. Uh, all right, so let's just kill what's left of these guys. Not doing terribly well. Um, okay. Again, we'll go in and get some armor here. Okay. All right, so are they all dead? I think they are. Yep, okay, doors opening. Last kill. Hook right into you, my friend. Okay. These things take quite a lot of punishment. Okay, and the glory kill. Nice, so uh, there you have it. 4K gaming from our own cloud gaming server. I was really quite surprised with the quality and smoothness of the experience. Remember, I was playing with the smallest G4 instance type available and only over half decent Wi-Fi. And yet it was very, very smooth. If you saw any stuttering in the video, I wasn't experiencing that whilst playing. That's because my screen recording software couldn't keep up with recording 4K at 60 FPS. Now, if you want to extend your gaming experience with automation, such as, for example, automatically creating a snapshot of the machine when you shut it down and creating a launch script to create a new instance with one command, check out my previous video and that will show you how to do so. Uh, it's basically the same as this video, but that uses Parsec rather than Moonlight. In the meantime, I really hope you found the video useful. And if you did, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. If you have any comments, including suggestions for future videos, cloud gaming or otherwise, why don't you leave a comment down below? I try to answer everyone. I'll catch you in the next one. And until then, thanks for watching. Now, quite a few of you asked whether I could make Now, if you want to extend your gaming experience... <laughs>
Bye 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 bye. In the meantime, I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, uh... <laughs>